These places, 700,000. Then we go, boom, right into this. I got Jamaican chicken. shirt. Venice Beach of Atlanta. You're talking about re-gentrification. World famous for having senior strippers. What do you guys not do well? Maybe start seeing the Black Lives Matter sign. There's no more black people in here. So. <laughs> He's got a oh, bunch so of phenomenal okay. stuff. Wow, Atlanta is impressive. Wow, what a popular guy. People were serious, they die hard about this Coke, man. They must have been drinking it when Coke was in the Coke. Recognize Atlanta's terrible past, move into a brighter future. This is crazy. You have new $700,000 apartments, yep. condos. You got the bandos over there. Man. The what? The abandoned apartments, call them bandos. Abandos, yeah, but... sort of hood zone over there, yeah. fair to say. And then this, yeah. you're oh, an artist. Yeah, I'm an artist, muralist, animator, illustrator. And uh, this is Atlanta. So this is like my first large scale mural I've done here. Um, this one. Yeah, you know, it speaks volumes, like just the, the height of it. Like I went from just doing like canvases about 25 to 34 to to, to, to a mural, you know what I'm saying? What do you get out of making art? What are you getting out of that? Expression, I get to tell a story. I get to tell a little bit of my story. I get to tell a little bit of the story of kind of my, my experiences and stuff of that nature. Okay. Uh, expression without necessarily using words, because sometimes words fail, at least me. People congregate and the big fire goes along. And Nighttime, whatnot. you guys come out. Yeah, man. You don't really necessarily have to come with the best dress. You just kind of bring your people and just kind of chill it's not bad if you don't feel like waiting in line for a club or anything just yeah come here and just no, those it. days are over for me yeah no i'm not gonna lie man i'm not really feeling it too at least like the club scene in atlanta is kind of trash bro it's, it's, it? if you can't if you can't pay like six hundred dollars for just sitting on the couch like that with like two hundred dollar bottles vip table yeah man you're not really that's not you're not really doing it these places seven hundred thousand yep that's steeper than i thought it would be that's i think that's some bubble bro. action because they don't even have garages, I don't think. But they're nice. They look good. Yeah, they look good. They, they, look they good. put them on like that, though. The quality, I'm telling you, the quality gotta be shit. So then we go, boom, right into this. I mean, yep. this is like... See, that's not even like, not even a mile, dog. See, you got the homies, you know what I'm saying, close it up. Right. That's, that's uh, surprising. People are going to pay that much to live right next to this right now. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. So is that is, is that the story of Atlanta right now? You're seeing a lot of pretty much like, yeah. boom right there. Yeah. But yeah, then uh, Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz Stadium. Yeah. Stadium. Stadium. So Boulevard is really weird, bro. So it's pretty they're, nice. They're trying to gentrify it, and it's still kind of hood at the same time. So he's got a fire going. Yeah, he's chilling. That's his spot. What's the homeless situation like in Atlanta? Homeless situation, it gets bounced around some areas. They kind of like scoot the homeless areas into like one like kind of a pocket. I guess try to keep other areas looking good. Right. When we get to like downtown, like in like like Georgia State campus, there's there's uh, areas in the parks where they have homeless people. They just kind of they, they can just hang, you know. Big uh, increase from the, since the pandemic, or nothing different really. Uh, big increase. Yeah, big, increase big increase. Yeah. doing anything creative in general it's almost like in the city it's great there's a lot of artists here there's a lot of opportunities but it's also like a kind of like a popularity contest at the same time so okay. essentially i know a lot of artists they had to go off to build a name there and then come back in order to succeed and they were yeah. or at least never in order to have like their name in a certain light you know what i mean okay so so atlanta's pretty competitive very competitive bro everybody does everything Everybody's an artist, everybody makes music, everybody a videographer. Like this neighborhood is nice and all that, yeah? But then we start seeing the Black Lives Matter signs, that's when uh, there's no more black people in here. So, <laughs> so this area, Ponce, and the old fourth floor was predominantly black, yeah? Okay. In like, I wanna say like late 80s, early 90s. But as soon as it gets more affluent, uh, right. people with money in there, okay, you know, a lot more a lot more white folks. And they start to put those Black Lives Matter signs up. It's usually an indication that all the black people have moved out. Which is like a, like, yeah, you're trying to be an ally, but at the same time, 
you're kind of the issue in so many right. parts. And you don't see those signs in majority black neighborhoods. Nah, man. Which is we know our lives. We know our lives matter. We don't have to like promote it. Right. I've never in all the American cities I go to to make videos. Yeah. I've never seen like BLM, you know, soccer camp being started right. or right. like anything for the community right. in those neighborhoods that need it's it, just, you know? Uh, at least during the George Floyd murder, it was a saying that paintings are not policy. Paintings ain't policy. Yeah, it looks nice. Right. It doesn't help. Like, it's just like a, not even a Band-Aid, bro. It's like you're just spitting on a wound, essentially. Okay, this is a sweet neighborhood, Yeah, man. right? This is every, freaking... I wish everybody could live in this neighborhood, you know what I'm this saying? This is, like, like, every house has style and, looks and clean, detail, looks and right. look at all the flowers. And like, the... nice foliage everywhere. Right? Man, this is... The city hitting This in is in not what course, I man. thought of when I thought of Atlanta. Is this your house, Quay? Is that? that my house? Yeah, that's yeah. my house. Welcome to my crib, y'all. That's my crib. We got the water fountain. You know okay, we're going to do a crib tradition in here. You know what I'm saying, man? It's good to see you. Got, got, got the thumb. privacy. Yeah, man. You know, I don't do that, man. I got I got people for that, bro. I don't, I don't touch that. You don't? Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're just taking a look, making sure they're doing it right. Wow, it's Atlanta is impressive. What is this? This is the belt line, man. It's like a small, well, it's like a small 285, Interstate 285 for people okay. that know. This is like one of the spots to be. So you got nice family fun out here. You it's know? the Venice Beach of Atlanta, maybe. There you go, yeah. See, this guy's right off Venice Beach, right to the Beltway. Right. What's up, man? Hello. Pond City Market, Pond City this part. People need a thing, but initially in this, this initial development, it was a uh, artist market. It was like mostly for like artists because there's a lot of studio right. like, spacing in there. But you know, the money, money talks, yeah? So of course they're gonna be like, hey, let's put these Let's put these overpriced boutiques in the retail spots here and let's really get some money like generating in here. Which it does a job, it does a job well, but that's just it's a popular place. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a popular place. We've been walking up in there. Yeah, let's check like, it out. Yeah, we have a lot of art inside the city. It's either the city commissions, uh artists to make this, either to recognize Atlanta's terrible past and kind of like move forward, move into a brighter future essentially. Okay. Very traumatic, dark history, but looking forward. Is that is that what you feel here yeah, as a local? Most of, most of it's definitely getting better and brighter. I guess just say we as people also have to be a, have a part in it, not just like have people delegate for us to right. aid in that. In the last few years, I've been bigger on going to like local uh, city hall meetings and actually like oh, cool. going into the spaces where they're having these events and people that we need to vote for to make decisions for us in our in our interest. You know what I'm saying? I um, I never cared about local politics. Bro, I didn't until, until two few, years ago. Bro, I didn't either until a few years ago. Like when the DA started calling the criminals the victims. And yeah. crime went through the roof right, i'm like right. all right something's off yeah man it's terrible bro but it's you're terrible. you're young and you're getting involved that's really cool i'm trying to try to man. it's all it's all a process bro so is this would you say one of these scenes like one of the top scenes in the city oh, definitely yeah. this is like one of the highlights of the city on city market man ecm like it already smells good yeah oh yeah it smells like it just kind of hits you immediately so Atlanta food scene is solid. Oh, it's great, bro. You just gotta know where to live. So this neighborhood we're in now, was this run down at one time and it's coming back or was it always pretty nice? Yeah, man, I heard it was pretty rough, like in the early 2000s, 90s, all that good okay. stuff. And as of like recent now, I was just trying to like build it up to become a, a, a central area to the city. You know, like before people weren't coming here just to like hang out, you know, you kind of, you, you kind of came here if you lived here, if you had business here. Um, but as of now, it's just like a central place to hang out. You know, you get some, get some ramen, get some expensive ass crystals or a plant, and be on your merry way. You know. So you're saying Atlanta? There's a lot of entrepreneurial energy here. A lot of startup everybody action. Has like a, a hustle in them. Everybody has like a drive. Everybody has a product that they can package and sell to other people. Uh, which is a beautiful thing because a lot of people don't really realize they can do that. And there's always a different route that you could take besides the the straight linear path of go to school, get a good job live your rest of your life and die at, you know. What you working on, bro? Uh, actually, some character design stuff for school. Oh, shit. That's yeah. cool, For bro. school? Yeah, well. Art class? School, more like portfolio stuff for myself. Oh, I do game cool. design right here. I've been coming oh, up with like awesome. a, a few ideas and stuff. Andrew Blooms, tattoo artist, is really cool. We've hung out a couple times. Let's just do some collaborations with him. Which one's <laughs> Andrew, bro? He's this one right here. He's got gold boy. He's got oh, a bunch cool. of phenomenal okay, stuff. Okay, no, that's cool, that's cool. Hey, Courtney Hicks, huge inspiration to me. 
Adela Pons, beautiful John Lewis piece, and Kilimari, part of the Lotus Eater Club. So is my cousin. So I got all, all, all from Atlanta. Oh yeah. What do you What do you guys not do well? Traffic. No, oh, dude, I uh, hate driving. That's I easy, yeah, literally that's drive. 45 minutes to work every day, and somehow I'm always either 10 minutes late or 30 minutes early. So this is your old gig here? <laughs> yeah, bro, this is where I met that boy Abe, man. What's up? That's one of my homies right there. <laughs> Clear my lounge. So this is like one of the oldest uh, clubs or strip clubs in the city. And it's uh, world famous for having uh, senior strippers. So you can go see some senior like, strippers. See some saggy titties if you want to. You know, like what, 50, like, yeah, like 60 50 up? up? Bro. Yes, bro. And it's still in operation. Still in operation, bro. To this and day. that's why you worked here. So after work, you could go there across go. the street. There you go. You got it, man. All right, you it's all it. coming together. <laughs> it's always a reason and for there's everything. there's a motel. Yeah, yeah bro. Well, hotel. hey, it looks, it looks quite nice for being... Um, Cheers to the moms, okay? For being a strip club for are you serious? I'm dead, yeah. It's at the bottom though, not like so like in the all this is like, you know, for sure rooms people stay in at the bottom. This music cool. It's, it's no secret. No. It's uh not a secret, but it's like a hidden gym. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm going for. It doesn't work? Nah, no, it don't work. <laughs> wow. Duke's a hazard style. But right now we at Island Takeaway, man. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get some good uh, Caribbean food, some good Jamaican food. Uh, I might get some oxtails, honestly. I don't really know. You're going to go for the oxtails? I might go for the oxtails, bro. I got jerk chicken, curry chicken, brown stew chicken, oxtail. You got uh, plantains with it, bro? Yeah. Besides, I got plantains, cabbage, and mac and cheese. Thank Island you. Takeaway is the name of your business. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Yes, sir. There we go. We got a little bit of the oxtail, the rice and peas, and I got uh, some plantains over there. They look like they're cooked to perfection. They look ripe enough. I got jerk Jamaican chicken. jerk. You got jerk chicken with the, with the rice and peas. And you got some little, you got some plantains too that look perfection, bro. They're ripe to perfection. Is this we some of your little, favorite, the Jamaican? Most definitely, bro. If I'm not eating this, then I might be eating some wings. <laughs> I might be eating a little bit of some wings. But after a while, you get kind of tired of wings. You want to like diversify it a little bit, you know? That's a nice jerk. That's a nice jerk, bro, right? It's got some head to it. Exactly. A little sweet. It's just what you need. It's nice. good for the soul. Jerk is. It's good for the soul, bro. I think Atlanta is good for the soul. Is that fair to say? Yes, yeah, a very accurate You guys have soul here. That's a very accurate description, yes. Nice tender yeah, you got good, uh, chicken in there. Yeah, you Let's good, cut that out. Chicken in there, get some rice, some jerk. You haven't had a good jerk chicken oxtail combo from a food truck. I don't think you're living life right. No. There's something you're not doing no. right. Like you need to get outside, breathe fresh air. We're gonna put our feet in our grass in the grass today, bro. When last time you put your feet in the grass? Oh, dog, don't do that. I what? live in Florida last week, man. Last week? Okay, yeah. I was gonna say, man. Yeah, bro, you gotta put your feet in the grass sometime, bro. <laughs> a little five points with it. Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Um, little five points. Little five points, bro. There's, a, there's a big, land, bro. there's a big five points. There's a, it's just regular, yeah, regular five points. Okay. Bro. Where you got the underground Atlanta. Are you guys proud of having Coca-Cola? Because you see the signs everywhere. Yeah, bro. It's so, people are so proud of having Coca-Cola here. If you go into an establishment and they only serve in Pepsi or Pepsi products, no business gets done there, bro. People are serious. They die hard about this Coke, man. It's ridiculous, bro. They must have been drinking it when Coke was in the Coke or something. It's, they just like straight up leave. It's just some really cool funky art back here. See if the homie Pinky's in. I mean, uh, see the homie Honey is in right now. Well, How you doing? In Atlanta. I told him we had to come to you. one of the freshest spots in Little Five Points to chop it up with you. You're right here. You've been uh, here for how long? 12 years? 13 years. 13, yeah, 13 That's years. Be 14 this year. Yeah, bro. So Five Points, what, what's the story here? It's cool. It's eclectic. It's diverse. Um, Little Five Points is a staple in Atlanta if you're okay. looking for the artsy community, the independent, independently owned and operated businesses. Sure. Um, retail that you won't find anywhere. You know, the cool things 
is just like right here at the Pink Zebra. Each rack is owned by a different creative. Uh, so we work with cut and sew designers. We work with um, brands that maybe, you know, you primarily see it like a pop-up or okay. a festival. Some are online based and some are literally, they just work out of their homes and the Pink Zebra houses a brick and mortar space for them. I just wanted to create a space. Um, actually, I, I made an event space as well in the back. Um, cool. And I incorporated- Can we see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I cool. incorporated and added, you know, suites for people. How about Atlanta? Give us a vibe. I'm a newbie. I've been in Atlanta for four hours. So far, I see a lot of creativity, mm -hmm. a lot of entrepreneurship energy, mm -hmm. a lot of positivity. Okay. I'm in the honeymoon period. I just got here. I understand. Yeah, it sounds like it. Is it fair to say like there's a like a bubbling energy here right now? Like a, um, or am I just, I, I don't know anything. I can be honest with you. Yeah, I, don't know I think everything is different depending on what circle you're around and the okay. people that you're introduced to or in that are showing you around um because i'm positive there's like some negative energy out there you know but i just yeah. kind of keep myself away from that so i'm not subject to it but i'm also not oblivious that it exists right yeah. because atlanta also has um a huge crime rate right now you know they're breaking it's up a lot um, yeah, but crime is very subjective, right? Right. Um, but in particular, I know that there's a lot of like car break-ins, mm -hmm. you know, right now. Um, once upon a time, that only used to take place, quote unquote, in the hood, right? Now it's in the ritzier parts of towns, which be, which for us would be considered Buckhead, right? They're breaking in cars like crazy. They're breaking into like our luxury malls. They're walking in doing smash and grabs, okay. which wasn't a thing before. So anytime that you, you know, experience um, theft and stealing, it's because there's a lack of, right? People don't steal just to steal for the most part. It's because they're stealing to survive or, you know, make up for what they don't have. Um, don't you think, but there are a lot of jobs, fair to say, right? Mm -hmm. You can, some people could work instead of steal. No, I agree with that. Some people totally could work instead of stealing. Um, but then there's also people that, you know, are thinking of it in this way. Well, this job is only paying me X, Y, Z of hours, or maybe people are applying and wanting a front position, you mm -hmm. know, for a job. And then there are certain people that are judging, you know, and put you in the back, maybe. Maybe you don't want to do that, you know? So not justifying it, but people say, well, I can go get it on my own in this way. Super living. Let's see it quick. What? Girl, not let me. They paying me to do a mural. Are you working on that now, or it's um... no? I, I, it's done. It's cemented. Oh, nice. Oh, that's interesting. So you're talking about regentrification. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean the history of this? Um, you're everyone's familiar with like you know past times where uh, everyone wanted to work in the city, and but okay. they want after work they wanted to get out of the city and go home to the quiet sub suburbs. Yeah, that was once a thing, but now we're in a you know environment where everyone wants to be in the mix of everything, um, such as the city. You know the city life. The the best restaurants are you know sure. in the city now. The best grocery stores are in the city, the high rise buildings, the live entertainment, you know? That's why even like when you lived in the suburbs, you would say, we're going to the city to do this and that for entertainment. Right. Now everyone wants that at their doorsteps. So gentrification, right? Um, kicking everyone out, you know, who lived in the city, who had to, you know, that had less money, that had to deal with the hustle and bustle of everyone. So now they're they being- going? They're, now they're going to the suburbs and getting kicked out. They're driving up the taxes, making it where people can't even afford the taxes for maybe their their houses that are that were passed down from their grandparents or their lineage, and they can't afford you know the taxes uh, increase on it because maybe they were on a fixed income or whatnot, right. and so they're being kicked out because they can't afford to stay in their home that's paid for. And people, investors, are coming in and scooping them up and putting hefty price tags on them and giving them to the rich or the wealthy. How do you feel about it as a local? Um, I feel, I understand it. I understand it, you know, um, it doesn't mean that I like it, but from what I know, usually what's done is there are steps that happen and take place before your home is taken from you, right? Um, and we all see what's happening, so we have to, you know, equip ourselves and, and protect ourselves to do that. We're like right on Georgia State campus right now, essentially. Roger Park right here. They come out, see the homeless dude, see my man's giving the show. Awesome. Little dance performance. Yeah, bro, you know. 
You might do some magic, man. You never know. Uh, he's going to drop it like a hat. Yeah, that is interesting. The, the university is right downtown. The whole campus is like essentially downtown. That's cool. Yeah. It's very old. Now we at my other mural location. Work with Gusto. Gusto. Gusto, man. Get just fresh, healthy food, bro. There we go. Nice. What is this piece called? Uh, heart of the city, dog. It's called heart of the city. Heart of the city, man. Cause you know we we hitting the heart of the city, bro. We got all Atlanta iconography, Georgia State. We got the Olympics, the '86 Olympics. We got oh, AT Alien. We got Atlanta Dreams up in here, man. So how how good did it feel to paint this here in a business downtown, bro? It was everything, dog. It was like really kind of solidified me as being like a part of the city, cause I've been in the city but it's one thing to be in the city to be of the city now I kind of feel like I'm of the city you know what I mean we got state flower Georgia peach state fruit Delta black power going on it's a, it was a great feeling man I've noticed a lot of uh, dads in like my generation they are more involved in their children's life versus uh the dads from the previous generation not being so heavy involved in like their life and whatever they children got going on and and sports and school and whatnot so it's just a real good dynamic to see uh and like parents i'm not a parent yet but it's just nice to see dads being involved in life like we just passed the field of uh of uh, little t-ballers and they it was like all it's like a lot of men out there it's a lot of dads out there hanging you know with their sons you know, with their daughters or whatever so it's just really good to see you know beautiful day sun going down over the skyline of atlanta thank you quay thank you brother Appreciate you. Appreciate it. If it wasn't for Quay, we wouldn't have seen Atlanta like we did. So we got to give a big thanks for the locals, the ones that know the city, the ones that are proud of where they're from and doing cool things for your city with your art. I can leave your link below. Okay. That could work. Instagram link. Instagram link. Yes. It's at Kuwait.atl. K-U-H. W-A-Y. Dot A-T-L. Uh, website address kowai.com k-u-h-w-a-y.com check me out i do animations illustrations murals anything you need please holler at me i can do it for you yeah wherever support you are, Quay. Where, support your local sorry go ahead wherever you are in the world wherever you the viewer sitting at your computer are in the world so guys this is part of a three-part atlanta series three different angles into this fascinating place. One through Quay's world. Also a video about the wealthy side of Atlanta, the very wealthy real estate. And then the other side of the tracks, the hood. Uh, place has many sides, many different stories. Check out those videos too. Thanks for coming along. Until the next one.